We are now talking to Draft Countdown Managing Partner and Analyst Shane Hallam. Shane, what's up, bud? Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm I'm doing good, doing good. Enjoying the NFL season, enjoying the college season. It's oh, yeah. been a good good couple months of football for me. I know you're you're watching college, and and there's so much going on in college football. And, and there's been so many upsets really early this season, and it's everything is moving and like it's like scaling. You you, you think who's going to we, we, going into the season? We all thought Bryce Young was going to be the number one pick. Now it's it's kind of shifting. Some people say he he's falling to third or fourth, but uh, he he's talented. Uh, the the Ohio State quarterback in um, Stroud, Stroud yeah. who's been fantastic this year. I think he's had, what, three games with six or more touchdowns? He's Which been, I think is the first time in college football history he, or the last, like, 50 years. Or he's something. been unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different quarterbacks going into this year's NFL draft. This is a quarterback class. But uh, before we get into that, how are you and your family doing uh, since the last time we talked when it came to COVID? Good, good. We're we're you know we're we're doing well. Me and my wife are here in in Pittsburgh, and uh, you know everything's going well. So, um, you know it it's been it's been a trying couple of years, I think, for everybody. But it's it's been good so far. So good for for us. So why don't we get into it? Because there's so much going on in the NFL. We were talking about the draft going into the season and some of the players that. Maybe would have stuck out, and and the New York Jets, who a lot of be, a lot of people were like, "Wow, this is going to be a fantastic draft class for the New York Jets," and and it really has. I mean, you look at Sauce Gardner; he's become one of the elite corners in the league so early in the season. Five games, and people are saying that he's a top seven, top eight corner in the NFL. Then you then you look at. Uh, uh, obviously, Garrett Wilson, who what he did with Joe Flacco, and now he's trying to figure out Zach Wilson, uh, the 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 early success that he has had this season, and then Jermaine Johnson. He, he only plays on third downs with the New York Jets, but I think slowly but surely they're going to move him. Uh, they're going to move him into the starting rotation, and we're going to see a little bit a little bit more of Jermaine Johnson as the season goes, and then Bryce Young, and then Max Mitchell, and all these young players coming in and, and playing a big part on the Jets' success. What are your thoughts of some of the young players that you have seen in the first five games of the season for the New York Jets? Uh, okay, I think it's been a slam dunk class, um, and I think – when you have those three first round picks, obviously trading back in for Jermaine Johnson, that helps, but you still got to get them. We we have enough first round picks bust in the NFL and never even see the field. Uh, I mean, Garrett Wilson, I think has made this offense better, just opened it up more and teams just can't, you know, focus on Elijah Moore and force Zach Wilson, try to beat them deep. Garrett Wilson's getting open even when he's not getting passes thrown his way. And I think you start to see the connection there with Zach Wilson now that he's back. And I think Brees Hall is slowly, I think by the end of the season, we're going to talk about him as a top five running back in the league. Wow. Um, I, I think he's these, these past two weeks, uh, maybe not the best competition, but the offensive line is beat up. You know, I mean, Max Mitchell's playing really well. Uh, as a rookie sliding in there, but it's still not ideal. I think Brees Hall's making a lot on his own, breaking tackles through the line, getting to the second level, catching the football pretty well. Um, you know, he, with those young legs, I really liked him in Iowa State, thought the vision was great. I think it's gotten better. And that when you see that, a player like, hey, I think this is really good, and then it gets better in the NFL, I think that shows something for the future. So for, for the Jets, I mean, it's a slam dunk class. We'll see where it takes them. You know, I, I think there's still some development. There's going to be some growing pains there, but this is a nice base to build that team around. Before I get to my question, I was going to say, a big fan of that neon sign in the, on your wall. I don't know if you <laughs> had that last time we had you on the show, but very cool. I, I, don't, I don't think we did. Uh, my wife got it for me for my birthday. So <laughs> oh, there you go. I don't, Happy I, I don't birthday, have to say my Twitter account anymore. It's right up there. <laughs> there you go. So uh, my question is, is there any individual team's draft class that you're surprised so far in the first five weeks, how well that they've played so far, and maybe the other way around, you were thinking more out of them and you are disappointed? Um, you know, I'll say one that I'm disappointed in a little bit, uh, but I, I think it's still going to come together. But it's the mm, I, was I, think about Tyler, to say that. Yeah. I think Tyler Linderbaum's played well at center. He's been one of the best offensive linemen. But outside of that, I think Kyle Hamilton is, has looked slow. He hasn't uh, really had the impact. I thought he might as a year one safety. Sometimes his year one safeties can come in. Uh, we've seen Derwin James, guys like that, really have an impact. And Kyle Hamilton hasn't done that. Uh, but I, I rated them as my kind of best draft 
um, for the year. And David Ajabo, they drafted. Looks like he's coming back sooner rather than later. So like maybe it changes. But the, a lot of the the day three guys haven't done much. Isaiah Likely was a nice preseason darling who hasn't done you know a ton. He's been on the field. Um, but you know I thought the Ra- the Ravens draft would have been maybe a little bit better. Um, all things considered. Um, and then in terms of drafts that I, I like that uh, I think have done a little better than anticipated, um, I think Seattle Seahawks have been an interesting one because we've seen Charles Cross, I think, step in day one. I wasn't sure of the fit. He's not, he wasn't a power run guy, but we see Geno Smith and the Seahawks, they've kind of evolved the offense a little bit for with Russell Wilson. Cross has played well. And then Tariq Bolin, the, the corner from UTSA, has been Lights out. A guy that ran a 4-3 at uh, 220 pound corner, 6-4, and he has a hit a pick six. He's been covering some of the top receivers and doing a pretty decent job for being a fifth round pick <laughs> at doing that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that he's in kind of that top tier uh, Richard Sherman type player for the Seahawks, but I think he has a little bit of that. And then I think we're going to get to see Kenneth Walker now, who I, th- I think has looked good in limited stints but uh Rashad Penny's out for the year and then Kenneth Walker's going to come in here and really take over so Seahawks was a, a draft I liked but didn't love um I think some of it's proven me wrong here I believe Walker's going to be a play a big part in that offense as the season progressively moves forward uh, he looked good when he he had the opportunity to play last week I think he's slowly but surely going to get first reps at the running back position I think he's going to be fun to watch we are talking to draft countdown managing partner and analyst Shane Hallam Shane, you look at the NFL, and you, we talk about players that really change, transition some of those teams. Micah Parsons has really transitioned and changed the Cowboys' defense. And it's not because of Cooper Rush on why they're winning. Everybody knows that. It's really because of this defense. And teams are starting to see the Cowboys as a dominant defensive team. And it's not because of some of the old players that they have on this line or even some of the new players. It's because of one player. And it, you see that he is attracting some of these, you know, these double double takes on this offensive, you know, team's offensive lines. So what are your thoughts to the Cowboys and their success of their defense? I'm a little surprised that it happened so quickly because I think last year, you know, people talked about, though, the turnovers, and that's what kind of made them, but they weren't a great defense. Michael Parsons was good, but the defense wasn't great. I think now once they realized what he can do, it was let's build the defense around what he can do and let him do it. Uh, I talked this summer to Marcus Mosher, who covers the Cowboys, and he had a comment that really floored me. He said, I don't think Micah Parsons thought he would be this good. Like He didn't realize <laughs> that he would be this good in the NFL, that it w- wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't even need that adjustment. And then now this, NFL defensive player of the week last week, like he's, he's getting better uh, and, and no one can stop him. Like you said, double teams can't stop him. What do you do with that? I, I think it shows you what an elite pass rusher can do because you, you know, you can have those safeties play up a little bit and look at the run and you don't have to worry about rushing extra guys. You know, they, they're, they're really switching the defensive backfield, the back seven, back eight um, often. And, that's fine because you have a guy that can get get to the quarterback. That's all that matters. So um, I think it's going to create more opportunities for the Cowboys. And and if like Cooper rush is doing what he has to do, but if Dak Prescott can come back and be more, more effective, get the ball down the field more, make this offense more dangerous. They they could be a dangerous team uh, in, in what's, become a pretty tough division outside of the commanders. Mm. So let's go to their opponent in the LA Rams. So a lot of people thought their offense would still be very strong this year, getting Allen Robinson, getting Cam Akers healthy for horrible. a full season, but they've they have not horrible. looked good so far outside of the week two game against the Falcons. Are you worried about them or their offensive line, Matthew Stafford or anything else like that? And you th- can you see them maybe not even winning the division because of it? I, I don't think they win the division. I think this is what happens when – you give up all those draft picks to bring in players. Um, It it can work. You won the Super Bowl. Like, it was worth it. It doesn't really matter. You won the Super Bowl. You got the trophy. It was worth it. But now long term, you don't have those young pieces to build around. The offensive line is either older or not as talented, and we're seeing those cracks. I mean, they they could not stand up to the Cowboys whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's no way that they were going to do anything offensively. 
you know, you have a guy like Cam Akers who was super promising, has the Achilles injury, is definitely not himself anymore. Well, you, you can't replace him. You don't have any draft picks to draft another running back. You, you know, you, you can't do it. Um, I think that's that's the problem is now, now the team's getting older. You know, you traded some of those picks for one-year rentals. It, it, it's becoming a problem when, like, Ben Skoranek has to be a central part of your offense. Um, it, it's an issue. And Cooper Cup's great, but he can't do everything, can't win you, you games. Um I think the Rams are in trouble and I, I don't think it's just this year. I think the Rams are in trouble long-term. Uh, they could be one of the worst teams in the NFL in three years. I think it's very possible because the, the, the cupboard is pretty bare on this team in terms of youth and players that are going to develop into stars. I, I'm not sure we have any anymore. Like Bobby Wagner and Aaron Donald are going to retire sooner rather than later. And they're going to be left with nothing on either side of the ball outside of Cooper cup. It, it's a problem. Shane, you look at the Buffalo Bills, and and obviously Josh Allen is an MVP candidate. He's been fantastic uh, early this season. He's done everything he can to really show his talent, even without Dable over there. And you know, obviously he's winning games for the New York Giants. Who would have thought that four and one New York Giants? But uh, nevertheless, you, you see what how talented Josh Allen is, Diggs and, and, and Davis, all these guys that he has, and the weakness they have is the running back position. And now you heard uh, that they reach out to the Carolina Panthers. They're interested in Christian McCaffrey. Who knows what happens before the trade deadline, which is very, very early in the season. So this could happen very, very soon. Where do you see the Buffalo Bills? Do you think the Buffalo Bills are as unstoppable as everybody thinks that they are? I, I think the offense is. I think it's going to be really hard to stop Josh Allen just when you have a player with the arm talent that he has. They've been really good at drafting receivers. Um, everyone compliments the Steelers for how they draft receivers, but drafting Gabe Davis in round four. And then uh, Khalil Shakir, now back healthy. Uh, he, he looks really good for a fifth-round rookie. I think he's going to get some meaningful snaps with Isaiah McKenzie. Um so I, I think it's going to be hard to stop this offense, even without the running back, even if they don't get a Christian McCaffrey. And if they do, uh, I, think, I think it's tough because this offensive line plays tough. They're physical. They're not the, the best, most athletic players, but they're physical. You have to fight every play. I think it's wearing down some defenses. I, I do think there are some parts of the Bills that can be exploited. I don't think they're unstoppable. I, I think we'll see this week against the Chiefs. I expect another you know shootout matchup. I think the Bills defense is good. I think Vaughn Miller has added a pass rush dimension they didn't have, especially when they have such big, long, you know, physical linemen up front. It helps when you have someone like that that can free up those those guys. Um, but I think the secondary has some issues. Um, I think covering one-on-one is not a strength of theirs. So when they face a quarterback that can exploit those matchups, it could be a problem. Teams could outscore them like what happened in the playoffs last year. Do I think they're the best team in the NFL? Probably, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win the Super Bowl. We, we've seen that time and time again. Um, I, I think there are some 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 problems that they need to, to fix up and hope to stay healthy to get. So what about your team, the Pittsburgh Steelers? They haven't looked oh, good on the God. season so far, but uh, Kenny Pickett finally got to start. Uh, he came into the game against the Jets in the second half of the season after Mitch Trubisky really just – Played like Mitch Trubisky pretty much. <laughs> so what have been your impressions of him so far? I, th- I think he's been good. You know, I-, I think it's been fine. I think it's been what the Steelers expected to see from him. Um, I think you could tell why they didn't want to rush him in there. Uh, he-, he-, he takes chances, he- maybe too much. Um, the-, the double coverage throw to Chase Claypool against the, uh, you know, against the Jets mm-hmm. turned into an interception. Like, Claypool could have caught it, still probably shouldn't have thrown it. <laughs> you know, that, that that's the type of thing Kenny Pickett's gonna do. And and they needed that juice, so it makes sense. I thought even against the Bills, as much of a blowout that was, they only scored three points. I thought Kenny Pickett's probably the best part of the team uh, in that game. Um, so I, I think there's some promise there. Uh the the problem for me is the rest of the team is just either bad or hurt. You know, that that that's the problem. Um, Deontay Johnson still dropping passes. The offensive line, I think, played better than last year, but it's not good enough to run the football, which they can't do at all. Najee Harris isn't healthy, and the secondary is one of the worst in the NFL. 